Okay, so maybe you've already seen my videos regarding the Flow Hive, and the Flow Hive's been improved. There is a Flow Hive 2, and that's what this is in this box that we're opening here, and just give you the first person view of opening it up and what's inside. They even want you to send your bee puns to flowhive.com. Here's the congratulations letter welcoming you to the Flow Hive group. Here is the much needed instruction manual here for your Flow Hive assembly. Everything's made in Australia and the wood that we're looking at here is Australian cedar. So it's going to be good looking, trust me. Let's pull away this paper. All the paper that they included is compostable. There are some good articles on there. I recommend you read them if you have the time. It's going to take some time to put this together. We're looking at the roof components here, close up of the flow emblem that's nicely cut into it. And uh, all these wooden parts are pretty good looking as far as I'm concerned. As you know, if you've been following my channel at all, I've put together every kind of flow hive that they make. And I've had great success with them. I really enjoy it. Here's the queen excluder that comes with it. And of course, uh, all the components in the box that you need. The flow frames themselves are in a separate box. This is a close up of the queen excluder. Looks kind of open. And I think this time for this uh, small flow hive too, I will be using it. And these are the frames for your uh, foundationless honeycomb. If you like to do that, I have racks of honeycomb in my bee shed, so it's ready to go. I'm not gonna use those here. And this is the bottom board cover. It's aluminum and there is a kind of blue tint plastic protection over it that you're gonna have to peel away that film. This is what it looks like after you peel it away. It's actually pretty rigid, pretty good. And I'm hoping that these openings are too small for bees to go through. Probably talk about that a little bit later, but we definitely don't want bees going through the bottom there and I'll show you why. This is the tray that goes in and these are all the components uh, that come packed in the box in the tray. They even include sandpaper this time. If you've got an orbital sander and it has a little velcro thing on it this is the type of sandpaper that goes on that and there's even a little tool here i'm going to use my own tools but everything is included if you wanted to just use the tools that are in the box and these are all the cedar components everything is fantastic the woodwork here absolutely looks flawless now this is the time before you start to put everything together if you're going to personalize the box do it now Pull these panels out and paint your designs on them. I'm going to do pyrography on this panel, and here you go. This is my little bee in flight, so this is going to be my brood box at the bottom. And I burn this in with a pyrography unit. So this is actually engraved into the cedar with heat. So I've enjoyed doing that. I've probably done six of these on different boxes so far, and I'm having a lot of fun personalizing my beehives with pyrography. So that's my bee in flight. I also did another one later. Oh yeah, don't forget to sign your work and put the date on it. Uh, that way I'm going to be able to keep track of how old this unit is many years down the line. Some people buy heat brands to brand their bee boxes, but you can get a pyrography kit a lot cheaper. Now these are the components for the base, and uh, they're all marked. There are laser etched numbers and identifying names inside each of these panels, so it really takes the guesswork out. But don't skip over reading those instructions. This is the level that goes into that removable vent on the back. And of course, you get the Flow Hive hat with the uh, Flow Veil. And uh, I have these hanging in my garage and they're super convenient to hand out to people when you go to talk about your bees. One of the differences for the Flow Hive 2, of course, is the fact that we have two viewing panels, one on each side for that uh, Honey Super. And then we're gonna get into the instructions. There is a roof alignment block there. And again, the sandpaper I mentioned and the little tool. If you wanna see other videos by honeyflow.com themselves, follow this website to honeyflow.com slant assembly and you'll be able to see their guidelines. I use exterior wood glue also when I put my components together. This stuff holds up really well and it does not discolor your woodwork. If you're going to put a finish on the exterior of your beehives, I recommend this Minwax Indoor Outdoor Helmsman Spar Urethane. It's holding up really well. I use it on all my pine boxes. I personally am not going to put that on this Flow Hive 2. These are the metal components that are part of that adjustable support system. They're really well made. They're welded up. Um, looking at these weldments, I'm not of course going to inspect them even though I have a background in non-destructive tests and inspection. These things are uh, really well made, it's heavy duty. 
I was anxious to see it. Also notice that these bottom pads, which are a black rubber, uh, they tilt in all directions so that you can also adapt to uneven ground as well as height adjustment. So that's pretty cool. The other thing I liked is the fact that these nuts are really long. So I don't think you can get enough honey into a flow hive that would overwhelm those supports. They're nice and strong. And of course, these nice brass pull knobs that replace the old wooden ones that we had before that sometimes uh, came out. These are gonna do really well, and every packet is marked. Now the roof, unlike the previous versions that came out, this one has little notches built into it, and you do not have to assemble the roof panels. They used to come in two pieces on each side, and then you kind of hand aligned them and guessed, but the alignment grooves are already there, so that guesswork is gone, and they go right on. I recommend you glue them and screw them down. And then what I do, um, I flip them over and run glue on the inside too. These are the new thumb screws that go in that will hold your roof to your top box. So it goes, it overlays the inner cover and actually screws into and grips onto your Honey Super. Or if you're just using the deep box when you're starting out, it'll do that. Now these are the windows. They come with film on both sides of them and one side is tinted green. Don't forget to pull off the clear one on the other side. You might have to fiddle with that a little while. This is the interior view of one of the uh, Honey Supers. And of course they took the time to laser mark it so you don't make any mistakes. So that was convenient and interesting to see that they did that. You'll notice here I have these red corner clamps. They make sure to hold all of my joints at a perfect 90 degree. I'm going to give you links uh, in the video description of the tools that I show and use here. Uh, I don't know how I ever get along without these aluminum corner blocks. Um, I use them for all of my wooden wear. And it's called the can -Do clamp. It adjusts to different thicknesses of wood, and you don't have to guess about that 90 degrees. And if you're going to glue things up, which I do now, I glue it, then I put the screws in. Uh, you don't want that to be out of 90 degrees. You really notice when you stack it up. And this is, of course, my Honey Super. I did another pyrography design. This bee, of course, has resources, and it's getting nectar, and has the um, pollen on its hind legs. So I thought that was appropriate to adorn my um, Super. So here it is all together. This is the Honey Super. There's an access panel on each side. We're showing that here. And the nice windows on the inside. And uh, pretty similar to the previous versions. Of course, this is the eight frame, six frame version, eight frame Langstroth, six frames of uh, flow frames. And again, I'm just showing you, you match them up six to six, seven to seven, and so on. The guesswork is really gone. I guess maybe in the past, people had problems matching up the right components. Now in the past, these shims that push your flow frames together were made out of wood. Now it looks like it's a clear lucite. These are nice and durable and of course won't take on moisture or expand or rot. And here it is installed inside. They're just shims that go to the sides and push the flow activated frames together and keep them nice and snug. So that was an interesting bonus there. I'm just showing you here that I clamp it up. I use the corner clamps to keep the 90 and I use a bar clamp to draw them in close and I put the screws in. I think bar clamps you can get just about anywhere and I did use of course a power drill. Always verify your corners are 90s by putting that 90 degree square in there and they're perfect of course and these are the components that go with the uh, support system so this is the bottom. Now they've done away with the traditional bottom landing board design and we're going to show that in a minute. Again, I'm just showing you how I clamp these up. And I leave them set for a couple hours till the glue takes and then I run the screws in and we're good to go. And they even mark it, like I said before, base, you know, and so on. Always check, double check, just like measuring twice, cutting once. We're not cutting anything here. I did not have to shape or modify anything. All the parts went together absolutely perfectly. These are laser cut. That's why the edges are black. And here's that landing board. The landing board is on a tilt. You do have to hand hold it right up against it there, but I lined it up with those uh, end joints and that was pretty nice. There's two screws that go in for it. These are the metal rails that are inside. One will support the uh, tray that slides in and out. And here's the back access to that. The other supports that aluminum bottom board cover. And here's that uh, leveling indicator that's built in and of course the brass knob underneath and this is the vent that we can flip it over and open for more ventilation or we can remove it all together and I'll show you that later too 
But uh, here's the tray. The tray is nice and heavy duty. It's thick material. This is where I'm hoping that my hygienic Varroa resistant line of bees will be dropping dead and chewed up Varroa. And I'll pull the tray out of the back and I'll be able to look at that up close. So hopefully we'll get some uh, pretty decent macro video of that later. This is showing the fit of that aluminum cover that's inside on the landing board. So it should allow debris and uh, as I've said before, Varroa hopefully will fall through this. And it overlays that leading edge of the box really nice. I was impressed by the fit. The tolerances here are super tight and along the back too. It went nice and snug up against the back there. So if you pull that vent off the back, nothing's going to come in there and access your colony through the back. There will be no sneak attacks from wasps and hornets and things like that. So really nice. And the landing board matches the width of that uh, base support and it tilts down. So rainwater and stuff gets shed. These are the components. I think this uh, support adjustable stand system is optional, but it comes with a lot of wood here and there are two pieces for each corner and you screw them on, put them together. At this point, those are cosmetic because all the structural support is coming from the metal itself. And the threaded uh, components of this are nice and strong. I just can't see this being overwhelmed. It is plenty stout for even a uh, beehive that's loaded with honey. So just showing you an interior view here of how it's connected and how it's threaded through there. Very good job on this. And of course, these are going to be sheltered pretty much from the weather. We'll see how that goes. So now we have it outside. And I chose this stone bench that I made as a, a test thing to level it up and kind of show you how it's going to look. Now this is the side level and it is marked on the level. When it's like that, it is in the tilted back position so that you could extract, extract honey. So that's why I'm showing it this way. Uh, if your hive is tilted front to back, that does not impact uh, the way your bees are going to create comb. I'm using the Acorn plastic frames here, which I've been getting into over the last couple of years. And I love these. They're triple dipped with wax and my bees really go after them and draw out the comb right away. We recently had a bear tear apart some hives and the wax uh, plastic foundation held up the best of any of them. The wooden foundation just gets torn apart. So here it is with the bottom box and of course we put in that uh, queen excluder and you want to make sure and put that on. I have demonstrated in past videos that if you don't put that excluder in there your queen can get up in there and will possibly lay eggs and develop brood in your flow frames and we don't want that. So here it is now with the flow super on. So we've got the support system, we've got the brood box and now we've got the honey super with the flow frames installed. And this is pretty tidy. Again, this system is much like the other uh, flow hives that have come out. The flow frames themselves are unchanged, so they activate the same. The components are interchangeable. The uh, adjustment screw here on the back so that you can slide it to the back to make sure that they're nice and snug there to eliminate bee space and make sure that they all line up correctly. I did not have to turn those screws. Again, the box was pretty accurate. Here's my customizing on the front where the landing board is and of course you pull honey out from the back and the flow uh, super there has the side panel access. Now we've got that nice thick inner cover and you have a plug that you can cover that up or you can remove it to allow ventilation for the bees to have access or you can put a feeder up there. So again, everything is improved materially. The thicknesses are nice, the fit is flawless, the grain of the wood, the cedar is fantastic. I couldn't imagine better wood than this. And keep in mind that you can put a finish on it, but it's not required because this is cedar and cedar is naturally weather resistant. So we're going to see how that goes. And then there's that top retaining thumb screw. When you first screw these in, they're kind of tight. But of course you're cutting threads into that hole that's been pre-drilled and once you've done that a couple of times it's much easier. I also recommend that once you find that little indentation on that upper box that so you go ahead and drill a little hole to receive that up there. So this is it. It's all together. It's complete and it's ready to go. It's ready for bees. So, um, and this is what it would look like if you did not have the uh, optional adjustment base. This is the adjustment base. I recommend you get it though because now you can put your hive anywhere and see the level there. It's right on center. Center side to side is critical. Front to back, not so critical. But when you're going to extract honey, it is nice to be able to tilt that just by adjusting the screws. And I'm just going to show you how we access it. Turn the lock, 
pull that panel out and of course this panel doubles now as the shelf for extracting honey. So I'm just going to show you how those components work. We're not going to actually extract honey because we don't even have bees in this uh, hive yet. But uh, as of my posting of this video, uh, the bees are already inspecting it and we're getting into prime swarm season here. I put uh, Swarm Commander in there and I'm expecting possibly a volunteer swarm to just move into this thing on their own. We have lots of bees in the area. So here's the shelf, the included shelf supports. Again, we're at the back of the hive and we have to remove that upper cover, which is how you access it to put the actuator in, which is just a stainless steel bar. You pull the plug out and you put in your tube for extraction. Now this is my modified tube. I got uh, food grade 90 degree elbows and I've put them together to make my own method for removing the honey. And I'm going to show you the tube by itself that comes with each flow frame. Each tube is with each flow frame so you have your own. Normally this would just come out and drip into an open jar. I found that by adding the elbow and extending the tubes I can put it through a recap mason jar lid which is what these are i can put a link of course in the video description on that too but i use these on all my flow hives now and the reason i do that is because when i put these on a jar and i open up the pop top on that it is perfectly fit for the uh, tubes that come out of your flow frames and then you just put that in like this here and now you don't have to worry about any other bees or wasps or anything else getting into your honey and you can get as much as half a gallon from a frame, from a flow frame. So you want to ideally put, if you're going to walk away from it, put a half gallon jug out there with a uh, recap mason jar lid on it and just let it drain right in. And you can go about your business and work on other hives and so on. Also, when you're activating this, I only put the bar halfway in and then I let the honey run out. You can see other videos that show how this works. And then once you see the diameter of that uh, tube not being filled with honey as it's draining out, you push it the rest of the way in and drain the rest of the honey and that prevents overflow. And we have an early forager here that's already coming to inspect this hive. Again, as of this morning, I have lots of scouts checking this out, so I might just luck out and have uh, a bee colony move in. I have lots of hives that are ready to swarm right now, and uh, I think they're going to find the Flow Hive 2 to be a pretty favorable environment. Now, you may want to go ahead and start with just your brood box and put the lid and inner cover on that and wait till your bees build up. In my case here, I'm moving this whole unit as is with the uh, Honey Super on and I'm going to put it right in my bee yard. And we're going to see how well the bees go to it. And with the Queen Excluder in, of course, there's that Varroa tray pulled out here so you can see how that works. And I'm also showing you how I arrange my kit here. This is just a uh, fishing tackle box that I found and I find that uh, it's a great way to organize the tools and stuff that you're going to use for beekeeping. So I of course have those brackets for the Flow Hive 2 kept in the top here. I have spare parts. I have queen cages. I have mason jar lids. Um, everything that you might need to make sure that you have in one spot. If you've ever dealt with swarms, you might run around like a chicken with your head cut off getting all your stuff together. I have it set up as a grab and go. And of course I enjoyed customizing the box. If you use pyrography and burn the wood, even when it ages, this is still going to look good. And it's also going to reduce the chance that somebody's going to steal your hive. If it's personalized and has your name all over it, you're going to keep your stuff. I hope you enjoyed this presentation about the Flow Hive 2. And if you want to look into it, there's a link in the description that shows, I know people are going to ask what they sell for. I Rather than tell you prices, I think I'm going to give you the link. And then you can look at all the stuff that they offer. So have fun keeping bees. I hope that your environment is going to support them this year. And I hope that you found this video beneficial. Thanks for watching as always.